Hi everybody, welcome back to Going Card Gaming. Um, ah, like the shirt? Um, I am doing a side quest, actually, because I'm not playing Fallout 76, as you can plainly tell. Um, I'm on the road for work, so I figured here's the start of the NFL. Uh, I would go ahead and make my picks. Now, believe it or not, I don't know any of the results. This is actually Friday. Packers and Eagles are playing currently in Brazil, so no idea what the score is or anything like this. These are all going to be blind picks, um, and all I did to get the um, spreads here is just do a quick search for NFL Week 1 odds on Brave, and the AI was uh, gracious enough to provide me with everything that I could ever want um, with these matchups. So we'll just go through, and again, this year we're making it via the spread, um, because I think it really is too easy just to pick. I, I think that they're correct that the, the Chiefs are going to win, so a big spoiler. We're already looking at week one, so let's just get right into it. Uh, Chiefs versus Ravens. Um, I think they nailed this one right on the head with the Chiefs uh, minus three on that, uh, meaning that the Chiefs are going to win by three points. Um, man, so do I think the Chiefs will win by um, – and, and remember, I get the tie here. So if the Chiefs do win by three, that goes to me. So we're just going to take the Chiefs at that minus three. So if they win by three or more, I get it. Um, so it's just the same as if they would put it at two and a half for me personally, just picking these games. Um, so, no, this is week one, so it's kind of hard to say, you know, how the outcomes are going to come around, why I am picking the way that I'm picking Um I think the Ravens are improved, but I also think the Chiefs are improved. And they're coming off of dual Super Bowl wins. And I know everybody on the planet's hoping that they are not the ones to get the three-peat. Um, personally, I don't think they should have gotten the two-peat or the one-peat. They got some gracious calls, really gracious calls. They did not look like the team that should have won it last year, especially... Both times they played the Broncos in the regular season and the playoffs. Uh, Chiefs looked absolutely horrible. Bunch of teams should have should have beat them. Um, with the help of some zebras out on the field, they were able to pull off the wins. So, and it's it's kind of like when the Chiefs guy got the run back, uh, like the record for the amount of kickoff returns in a single season. Um, I think he had like five straight returns and the last one was against Denver, but as he's running back, you see not just one illegal block in the back, but two right dead center camera. And they didn't call him cause they wanted that guy to have the record. So he did, um, asterisks. We all saw it. Doesn't count. Sorry. Um, it counts only in the, I mean, in the record books. It's in there, but when you really look at it, he he didn't get it. Not not legally. Um, whether the refs called it or not, you know, it's kind of like uh, the guys getting the home run records, but they were taking PEDs at the time. Asterisk. I mean, it's in the record book. They got it, right? But do they really deserve that? It's kind of the same thing here. Um, anyway, kind of getting off topic. Chiefs by, by three on that one. I'll go with that one. So, um, bear with me for just a second. Uh, Eagles and Packers currently going on. I did think the Eagles were going to win this. And again, I think they nailed it right on. I think the Eagles by three. So I'll take the Eagles minus two and a half on that one. Um, Dolphins, Jaguars, uh, I, and I, I don't have a lot to say about, I know I'm kind of skimming over Eagles and, and Packers. Um, Eagles, 
you know, they're, they're in that zone, in that mode right now of in the next year or two, they could win a Super Bowl, another Super Bowl. So it just depends on those pieces and how they come together each year and the moves they're making in the off season and during the trades during the regular year. So I, I, I the Packers are good. Don't get me wrong. I, I think the Packers are probably a playoff team, but so are the Eagles. And I think the Eagles are Super Bowl contenders this year. So I'm going to go with the Eagles over the Packers by three, first game of the year. Um, that's in Brazil, too. And then the Eagles are forced to wear these awful uniforms because the soccer team down there, their, their rivals wear that, those colors. And so I guess they're the only ones that can wear those colors in the stadium. Dumb, dumb thing. Um, why don't you put the Eagles in like some uh, sparkly, dark green sparkle, like candy apple red, but only green, you know, green instead. Just make them just really stand out. Put some lights on the helmet. I mean, let's make a show of it, guys. Come on, let's let's get it together. NFL, do better. You're better than that. I know you are. Let's put it together. Let's make the uniforms pop down there, and then make them regret they they didn't deck them out in the in, in the uh, all green. So, a little a little irritated that not that I like the Eagles by any means. I don't I don't particularly like uh, Philadelphia fans. Um, I've only met in my life two, uh, one today actually, and the other one, really nice one I met was of all places in the last Taco Bueno that was in Colorado before it closed down. Uh, he was working there, and I think I think he had an Eagles hat or an Eagles shirt because I think they allow them to wear jerseys on certain days during football days or something anyway somehow we got to talking and this guy was a uh, Phillies fan nicest guy in the world couldn't believe it every other time I met a Phillies fan whether it's for the the Philadelphia Phillies the Eagles uh the Flyers they are the rudest SOBs they suck who else throws snowballs at Santa I mean really I know I've been over this before in the past, but it's it's ridiculous. So, saying that, Eagles by three, is that enough content for you? Um, let me know how I'm doing in the comments, by the way. If you don't like it, tough. Uh, I don't care what you say in the comments. <laughs> uh, but I do like to hear it. I mean, uh, if it's constructive, I'll try and, you know, get some good feedback there and and work with you if you're just saying i suck move on come on you don't like the pick great tell me why you don't like the pick be constructive come on tell me tell me a little bit just give me give me a good reason why you don't like what i'm saying so let's move on uh dolphins jaguars dolphins uh three and a half favors on that uh, Jaguars are just not that good. I think the Dolphins probably win this uh, probably by seven or more. Um, so it might be a little low on the line. Um, I'll, I'll take the Dolphins minus three and a half for sure. Falcons, Steelers. Well, we all know who the Steelers quarterback is. I mean, does he show up and do any good? How good are the Falcons? I mean, the Falcons are favored by three. I, I wish I could say, you know, that I think the Steelers are, are going to win that game because it, I don't I don't particularly think Atlanta is all that good. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I don't think the Steelers will make the playoffs either. I think the Steelers are going to have trouble winning six games uh, with Russell Wilson as their quarterback. They, I, I know you got them for nothing. Oh, believe me, as a Broncos fan, you got a deal. Uh, well, did you? Did you get a deal? Can't. I mean, yeah, you got him really for nothing. You're not paying him anything, you know. But I think he's. I think he's done in the league. 
Um, we're watching a dead man walking. He's a zombie out on the field. I mean, he's turning the wrong way. He's not finding the receivers very well. He's taking a lot of sacks, you know, and he's got time. It's not like he didn't have time to make some decisions. He had some time to make some bad decisions is what happened. So, I mean, thank you for your your time here in Denver, but, yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's going to be any better. In fact, I think it'll actually probably be worse um, It's in Pittsburgh. Sorry, all you Pittsburgh Steeler fans, but, I mean, Russell Wilson – He's done. He's he's just done in the league, and and it's like, you know, a lot of the league just doesn't know it yet. Uh, but but they will after this season. Um, I I'm not even sure Russell Wilson is the starter at the end of this season for the Steelers. Um, probably starts about ten games for him. Probably wins about three or four out of those. And by that time, it's too late. They're out of the playoffs. They're not going blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'll, I'll take the Falcons, even with the minus three. Um, who knows how that game's really going to come out. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. Um, Giants and Vikings. Um, this is kind of a yawn fest, really. Um Giants are actually favored. I don't know why they did the plus one and a half. Usually you're just giving me the the, the, the negative. Um, but the Vikings need to add one and a half. Again, I think I think the the I, I think it's right on the money. Um, I think this week is really showing you the people in Vegas really know what they were doing. I had some some figures in my mind before I even came on today and started talking about this that, you know, and I was thinking Chiefs Ravens, Chiefs probably going to win that by three. You know, I was thinking about that and the Eagles Packers, you know, that's going to be a good highly contested game. But I, I thought the, I know a lot of people were picking the Packers to win that, but I was just thinking the Eagles by about three and here, both of those they nailed uh, right along with what I was thinking. Um, and it, and it seems, I think they might've missed a little bit on the Dolphins Jaguars one, uh, but the Falcons and Steelers, I mean, that could really be one and a half. Um, but three is not out of the question for the Falcons. So that's why I'm taking the Falcons minus three. Uh, you know, the Giants really are at minus one and a half here. If you really, you can read it either way. Vikings plus one and a half or Giants minus one and a half so that's the swing there um i i just think the vikings are they're going to be really bad this year um they might end up with the worst the worst record in football at um four and 13 somewhere in that neighborhood um and I don't think it's going to start – they're not going to get – I don't think they're going to get a win in week one. I do think the Giants are going to win. And I think the Giants are going to win by more than the one and a half uh, stone. So I'm going to take the Giants at the minus one and a half. Um, I, I think you could probably put the Giants at a probably – at a six, five, or five and a half, really. Um, as, you know, two field goals. I think the Giants will win by at least two field goals. So, uh, but that's going to be kind of a yawner. Um, I don't think there's going to be, a, it's not going to be a high scoring game and they don't have it that high scoring 41 points. So it's like 21, 20 really is, is that's kind of where you're looking at in that type of range of score at the over under being at 41. So, um, yep, yeah, just, just, it's kind of interesting when you really analyze, both the the spread, Vikings plus one and a half, meaning they're go- they need to add 1.5 points to their total to make it even a tie game. Um, so and and they're saying 41 total points will be scored. So they think that the Giants will win basically by two. So if you if you take 
the total um, and then make it to where the, the Giants win by two. So that 21-20. So you're looking at uh, 19 to 22, somewhere in that everyone either actually either 20 to 21 or uh, 19 to 22. That's what they're saying the score will be. If you read both of those together, that's that's really what they're they're giving you the score. Um, they're really predicting the score every week. So if you read it that way, that's how you can kind of arrive at uh, what they think the the total points will be and who's going to win it and by what. So if you if you just do a little bit of math, you can you can figure it out. You can you can see what the exact what they think the exact score every week is going to be for each game. So that's that's pretty cool um, when you when you come to really understand that uh, the money line. Um, so I'm not sure what the minus 160 is. Generally, I think I think what that is is if you put down a hundred dollars, that's what you're going to win. So or the the balance of it will be. So like I think if you put down a hundred dollars on the Falcons Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how that works. So you, you have to put down a hundred and sixty dollars to win a hundred. Took me a minute to remember exactly how that works. And then for the Steelers, if you if you bet a hundred you will get 135. That's that's how that works. So, and when they say even, you put down 100, you win 100. So it's even, even money. Um, it's weird how the money line is strange for the for the Giants and Vikings because usually you have like what you see with the Falcons and Steelers that they think the Falcons are going to win. And so if you put 100 down, you win 30, 135 from, from the Steelers if the Steelers happen to win. And then the, the Falcons, you, you kind of get just the 60 bucks back if they win. Um, but when you look at something like the Vikings at plus 1.5 points, um, and then their money line is even, but the Giants are... You know, you have to put 120 down. It should be even, even. Um, so we, sometimes the the money line is is the weird one to figure out. Um, and I'm not exactly sure. Maybe somebody else can explain it. And I'm sure there are videos out there. So pick one, go watch it. They'll explain it to you. Gambling, they love to have you understand what you're doing, and and make those educated bets. Is really what they're looking for. Um, as long as you're betting, they don't they don't really care. They're gonna win their money one way or the other because somebody's gonna bet one way, somebody's gonna bet another. They're gonna they're gonna get it. They're gonna get their money. So um, if they didn't, if if the if the casinos didn't get their money, there would be no casinos. And there are hundreds of casinos out there now, hundreds. So just just think about it. Um, it, it's not going to change anything. Y'all are going to still bet. And that's, I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, moving on, moving on. Uh, I've spent too much time on this already. Um, Saints Panthers. So I also think the Panthers are going to not be very good this year. Um, I don't think, well, it's, it's hard to say what Derek Carr will do in, in uh, New Orleans as the Saints quarterback now. I mean, that's he, he, I think he's a better quarterback than they gave him credit for in Oakland or Las Vegas or wherever wherever those guys end up. Um, I think he's a better quarterback than, he gave, than they gave him credit for, but just like a step. So if you take Derek Carr on a scale of 1 to 10 and you give him – you know, 10 being the best quarterback, like a elite quarterback, 
uh, Peyton Manning, John Elway, Joe Montana, um, uh, uh, blanked, uh, Brady. Um, one of those guys. Uh, I think you could put Derek Carr at about a, I want to say a six or seven, somewhere in there. Um, I think that the Raiders had him at a, about a five or six. So whatever you have him at, you could probably add one notch to that. He's just a little bit better than what I think they gave him credit for. And again, that's going to show here in the points, although I think that the Panthers are just not that good. Um, and it does show in the money line. Look at 180. Oof. Uh, I think the Saints actually probably um, win this by more than four. So I'm going to take the Saints minus four on that. Uh, Bengals, Patriots. <laughs> okay, I, I lied earlier when I said um, the Vikings might have the worst record in football this year. The Patriots are going to have the worst record. Uh, what they... What they win last year? Three games? Four games? One of those came against Denver. So, I mean... But they didn't they didn't make any moves that are really highlightable. Uh, they just... They, I, I know they're probably in a rebuilding year, but they're rebuilding with nothing. Um, I this, this Patriots team now reminds me of the Patriots in eras past it's kind of like the way the tampa bay buccaneers used to be in the orange uniforms in the 80s uh and the nfl films pretty much on both teams every year would you know they they highlight their four or five good games from the previous season they show all the spectacular plays and then at the very end it would say the tampa bay bucks a team on the rise and every year it was that, a team on the rise. Because they had nowhere else to go but up. Um, so it, it it made sense at the time. And that's that's what this Patriots team now reminds me is the NFL next year is going to do uh, a year in review of the Patriots. And they're going to highlight their two to three games that they won and the great plays in those games. Like, they might have a run breakout for 80 yards in a game against, like, um, the Arizona Cardinals or who's, who else is really bad this year? I, yeah, I can't, I can't even remember. Um, and they're gonna have like an 80 yard run breakout. They'll show that. And at the end, at the end of the film next season, it'll be the New England Patriots, a team on the rise. Because they have, they were going to have nowhere else to go but up after this. Um, this is going to be just all those years of winning and Super Bowls that Brady did for you guys. Uh, just go watch some, just go watch some tape of that um, because it's it's going to be bad. Now, do I think the Bengals will win by seven and a half? Oof, that's a big, that's a big, you know. But I think the Bengals probably are a playoff team, and the Patriots definitely are not. They are not going to go to the playoffs. Um, anybody, I, I'm sorry, if you think the Patriots really do have what it takes to go um, to, to the playoffs right now, I mean, stop doing YouTube videos or, you know, stop. I mean, at, the, at this point, just just stop. Just Just shut up. I mean, you really do need to be silent because anything you say, I mean, there can be some good highlight points and and maybe some players that are that are decent, and you can highlight those guys. But overall, you, you cannot tell me with any um, seriousness that the Patriots are going to go to the playoffs this year. They're because they are they are just not, and the Bengals are. It's a seven and a half, and they probably they probably nailed it. But I, I'm going to say the Bengals probably win by even more, um, 10 to 14 points. So I'm going to go the Bengals minus 7.5 on that one. Um, the Bears and Titans. I, I actually think, uh, unfortunately, I think these two teams are 
right there. Uh, both kind of mediocre teams, both nine and eight ish teams right in there. Um, so do I, do I think the Bears are going to beat the Titans by four? I'm going to actually not agree with that this time. The Bears could pull it off, but probably by a field goal or less. It might come down to a, a missed extra point by the Titans. Um, you know, bangs went off the, the crossbar, the upright or something from 64 yards out or some ridiculous play. Or the wind swirling. Um, they're in Tennessee, so, you know. It, it, something weird is going to happen. The Bears are going to win, but they're going to win it by one or two points. It's 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 going to be a close game. It might be exciting towards the end, but I don't think the the mid part of the game is going to be all that all that exciting. I mean, who knows? Maybe they score eighty points in that game. It ends up being like forty one thirty eight or something, you know. Um, the, and the Bears still pull it off, but only do it by three. So. Uh, that's where I'm kind of sitting with this game is I actually feel like, yeah, there's just mid-grade um, teams. So I'm going to give it to the, the Titans on this one, and I'm going to go against the Bears minus four. So I'm going to say the Titans plus four on that one. Um, and as you can see, it, it, you know, that's what this this number right here means. This is referring to the Titans plus four. So you read the Bears number first, minus four, and the Titans are plus four. So that's how you get to that. So I'm going to take the Titans plus four. Um, so now, and, and I just realized on my on my screen, um, I can't tell because I'm I'm looking at the the uh, screen. Uh, which is overlaying what I'm actually videoing. So maybe hold on just a second. Let me let me go ahead and uh, move this over a little bit. Maybe even half and half this. Yeah, that would be better. Should have been doing this the whole time, so I, I apologize for that. And moving forward with the remaining videos for this season, I'll keep that in mind. Um, so that that's that's what I was talking about with the my, the plus four. So the minus four right here. That's for the Bears, Titans, minus four. Okay, so let's go ahead and, oops, the, the Bills Cardinals. Let's uh, go ahead and scroll that down a little bit so we can get all the way to the, the game I really want to get to, Seahawks, Broncos. But we'll take them one at a time here. Uh, Bills versus the Cardinals. And um, the Bills, again, they're, they're not out of that Super Bowl run type of situation. Do I think the Bills will win the Super Bowl or go to the Super Bowl? That's a really tough question. Um, yeah, I think it's going to depend on their overall record by the end of the year. If the Bills win... 13 games and they have home field advantage, especially over KC. I, I think the Bills do go to another Super Bowl, but they need that home field advantage. Um, I think, didn't KC come into Buffalo and win? I think they did uh, that first that first Super Bowl two years ago. Uh, I think they did come into New York and and beat the Bills on their home ground. But again, the Bills are going to need that, um, you know. So the Cardinals again, it, it's it, it's tough because the Cardinals it seems like year after year after year just are that team that just isn't isn't doing anything. I, I don't know if it's just because. They're in Arizona, and the summers when you're coming into training camp, every day is 120 plus degrees. Nobody wants to be in Arizona. Although Larry Fitzgerald played 14 seasons here in Arizona, and uh, uh, that does, I mean, that's phenomenal. And he's probably the best Cardinal 
um, might be in the history of the Cardinals. And that's really saying something because um, not, not to take anything away from Larry Fitzgerald. I think he is a great player, Hall of Famer. Um, but there's not really anybody else to compare him against because there's a lot of Cardinals players that have been phenomenal over that long of a period for the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals have had years where they've done well. They've gone deep in the playoffs. Uh, I think with Larry Fitzgerald, they even made a Super Bowl once but lost it. I don't think the Cardinals have ever won a Super Bowl. And it's, I mean, it's a good bet that they're not going to win it this year. And the Bills have a chance. So the Bills uh, minus... Six and a half. That's that's a tough one. Um, because I I don't know how I I haven't and it, probably like everybody I haven't been paying attention to the Cardinals quite as as much as I probably should have. Because I mean they're the Cardinals. Um, and they they haven't really. I mean, if they had drafted better over the last few years, or maybe even. Uh, somehow made their team better in some way. Uh, they could have been a playoff contender this year or, you know, being around for the Super Bowl or, you know, attempting to do these things. But it, it seems like they're just um, satisfied with having a football team that makes the playoffs every few years. Um, and that's really not the mindset over about 30 of the other NFL teams. I think there might be two teams, although I don't know who the other one is. Um, may, maybe the Carolina Panthers, but they've made the playoffs. And I think, well, I don't know, the Broncos beat them um, Super Bowl 50. But, you know, they have that mindset. I think it's really the Cardinals. They don't have that mindset of we want to win a Super Bowl every year and it starts in in the previous season with that final game that is the start of the next season when that game ends the next season begins uh, training camps um, organized team activities OTAs uh, you know those those types of things are really um, the kinds of things that build towards that mindset, team building, um, you know, just collaborating with your teammates at the end of that season with especially members that you believe are, are going to be back the next season. Um, I, I would imagine 20 to 30 members of each team probably go out and do something whatever that is at the end of the year expecting to come back with those same guys at the start of the next season going for win after win after win and getting you to the playoffs winning in the playoffs and getting to the Super Bowl and then winning that Vince Lombardi trophy in the end so the the Cardinals I don't, I don't maybe they don't, maybe they do have that mindset but they never ha seem to have the players that can just really get them there. And and I don't know why that is. I don't know why that is. And I'm not sure the Cardinals do either. If they could figure it out, I bet they'd feel a better, uh, a better team. So if they ever figure it out, watch out. Because they might do what the um, Patriots did. I mean, maybe they get some sort of Tom Brady phenom and are able to build phenomenal offenses around that. And then on top of that, have four or five hard nosed uh, trench defensive front guys and are able to outside blitz the, the opposing quarterbacks and cause a bunch of trouble. Maybe, maybe there'll be a team in an, in five. I don't, I, I can't see it this year, next year, or maybe even the year after that. But in, in four or five years, who knows? The Cardinals may feel the team like that. You, you just never know what the, the future is going to hold. 
But for this team, right now, I don't I don't think they got it. And and the Bills do. They're the opposite. The Bills are the opposite of everything I just said about the Cardinals. So do I think the Bills win by six and a half? I kind of think they nailed this one because I was thinking seven. Um, maybe eight. Maybe there's a two-point conversion at some point. Um, I'm going to take the Bills. I'm going to take the Bills minus six and a half. I might lose that one. Um I just have this feeling in my gut that the Cardinals, uh, they probably lose, but they only lose by maybe three. Um, it's just a weird feeling, but I can't, I can't go with that. Not week one, not week one. Um, if, you know, we have a couple of weeks under our belt, the Cardinals really have outplayed their opponents and have shown us something, maybe that would be different. Um, but week one, I, you know, and it could be the, the opposite happens. The Bills just blow them out and they win by 30 or something ridiculous. So I'll take the Bills uh, minus six and a half there. Move on to the Colts Texans. Um, I, I I think, oh yeah, they do have the Texans by three. I see because it's the way they put this up. Um, they're putting the away team versus the home team. And the home team, they generally give the home team seven points. So um, that's kind of where the balance kind of starts, is that home field advantage. Uh, that's why it's so important, I think, for the Bills to get that this year. Anyway, um, let's let's kind of move on here to the, the Colts, Texans one. We'll stop talking about those guys above. Um, the Colts are um, underdogs, three-point underdogs here to the Texans. Um, I think the Texans probably are another playoff team. It's uh, it's tough to say for sure who's going to win what division. Um, I, I don't think the Colts win their division. I don't, I don't think they're a playoff team this year, but they pr- probably are in that eight to nine win range, uh, outside chance of a wild card. If a couple teams stumble at the, at the goal line, so to speak at the finish line, uh, can't quite cross the tape. They might slide in there and snake the last playoff spot, the number seven playoff spot um but i i want to say really now that the texans are a playoff team um they probably get the third or fourth seed in the afc um it it's it's tough to say but um I do agree that the Texans are probably going to win this by at least three, probably a little bit more than that. Uh, home field advantage, we'll give them seven on this one, I think. Um, so I think Texas won by a little bit even more than the minus three here. Um, Texans were pretty good last year looking at improving their team, and I think they did that. So uh, I think they're going to be slightly better than they were last year. They're going to make the playoffs. All the all the things that they need to do, they are doing. Um, I think they probably are, are improved from last year. They probably win a playoff game or two and challenge for the uh, AFC title. But I don't think they win um, the AFC, much less the Super Bowl this year. But they'll definitely beat the Colts. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to them. And really, I'll take a minus three. I think that might be somewhat of a deal. I think that's really going to um, be great uh, for the Texans, a great matchup. Um, I think they're they're going to kind of show that they're going to dominate um, those teams this year. Um, and I think the Texans are about a 10 or 11 win team, probably, probably 11. Um, so we'll, we'll see what the outcome is by the end of the year, but... 
they're going to do enough to make the playoffs. So, um, so we'll move on from there. Chargers Raiders are next up on the docket. Um, and we are showing the Chargers are favored, even in Las Vegas. I agree. This is going to be one of the worst Raider seasons we've seen. They are going to give the Patriots a run for their money at the worst uh, record in football. Um, it could be that the Raiders win. I'll give them more credit than the, the Patriots. I think they might be slightly better than the Patriots. So I'm going to put them at like three to four wins this season. Um, but I, I'm not sure they beat anyone in the division. I think the Broncos beat them twice. I think the Chargers beat them twice. The Chiefs definitely are going to beat them twice. Um, so I think they go 0-6 in the division. And the remaining, um, how many games? 11 games are uh, up in the air. They could go, they could go 50-50 there. Uh, but I don't think so. Um, I, I think they only win three or four of those remaining 11 games. So they go like four and seven outside of the division. Um, I don't know what their schedule's like. I haven't seen it. So I, don't, I couldn't tell you who those four wins might be against. Um, although they could shock everybody and beat the Broncos or anybody in the division, really. They could even beat the Chiefs. Uh, the Raiders and the Chargers, and for that matter, the Chiefs and the Broncos, when they play each other in the division, it's it's uh, they always play up to their opponent. So it's always a good matchup, even though a lot of the class, what I call the classic AFC West showdowns end up being like a field goal battle because no one can hit the end zone, or or it gets to be like nine to seven because one team gets in the the end zone one time, the other team kicks three or four field goals, but usually it ends up like 12 to nine or six to nine or something like that. Um, although in more, more of the recent years, it's, it's been a lot tougher. It's, it's like maybe 17 to 13 where both teams get a touchdown and the rest is just field goals. But you always see that classic AFC West matchup where there's just a lot of field goals and not a lot of touchdowns scored um, in those in those matchups. Now for this one, I I think that this is kind of a, a deal for the Chargers. Um, I think the Chargers probably blow the Raiders out of the water by a little bit more than three. Um, weren't they the ones that dealt the Raiders? Well, maybe no. Maybe the Raiders did that to the Chargers. I, I don't remember. Um, but the Chargers are much improved. They have a new coach, a elite coach, kind of like the Broncos do. Um, and to be fair, without uh, Harbaugh, I think that the Chargers probably are a mediocre team. With Harbaugh and his building of the team, he's changed the team already. They're definitely a better team. I, I I think they win, not just by by three, but more like 10, 14, or more. Um, so I'll definitely take the Chargers minus three in this one. I think that's kind of, that might be the lock of the week, really, right there. Um, the Chargers minus three is almost a no-brainer. So we'll, we'll go on to the next one. Now, this is the one that's probably the toughest game to call because of Bo Nix. What, and, and I'm parroting the entire analysts of, I mean, just anybody anywhere saying about Bo Nix. You don't know what you have in him versus the number ones, although you did see him versus the number ones in the week one playoff, um, and he just crushed it. Um he has, he's a more mature quarterback coming into the league at 24 years of age. So he's not, I mean, he's a rookie, but he's not 
like the other rookies. He also has the most uh, playing experience in the NCAA um, for Oregon. Um, so I think just looking at, yes, he's making some of those rookie mistakes. I mean, he's throwing balls he shouldn't quite be throwing. There are balls getting blocked at the line because he's he's not seeing the linesmen jumping and their arms going up or how tall they're going to be or how he needs to make that adjustment. Um, but I think he's already started to make those adjustments, which also means he is definitely an NFL quarterback. He is a starting quarterback in the NFL for sure, without a doubt right now. Now, is he a Hall of Fame quarterback? Is he going to be right out of the gate? Who knows? We don't know. And that's part of the problem. Is we, we haven't seen enough of him. Well, most people haven't. I, I have. Um, I, I watched. I, I, I know. Most people didn't probably didn't watch all three of the Denver Bronco preseason games. But I did. Um. And then what I saw out of Bo Nix was crisp, tight, accurate spirals going into, uh, I mean, if you take away the first two, three passes, let's just say the first three passes, just to be safe. Those first three passes were kind of jinky. Um, it's almost like he was still getting used to the rhythm of the Broncos at the time. But by the second drive, he had it down. He was hitting those slants just like that. Just like any um, Pro Bowl quarterback in the NFL. Uh, I think the Denver Broncos know that they already have probably a Hall of Famer in Bo Nix. Um, I've never been excited not one time, not one time have I been excited about any quarterback that the Denver Broncos have drafted. Not once. Until Bo Nix. Bo Nix is the first quarterback that I've been excited and happy that they took. No one, nowhere else. Like the rest of the time, I'm like, eh, I'm not that excited about this guy. Let's see how he does. And then you see him in the in the preseason. You're like, oh, I'm not that excited about this guy. Let's see how he does in the regular season. And then he goes in the regular season. I'm not that excited about this guy. I wonder who they're going to get next. That's how that's been. Bo Nix, it's not like that. It is not like that. I'm excited for Bo Nix football. Um, and as you can see, I think they missed this one. This is very, very rarely do I think they miss one. Um... They have the Seahawks at minus six, the Broncos plus six. I'll take the Broncos at plus six in an easy one, easy one. Um, now, I, I think the Chargers is, is more of a lock at minus three because the, the, that's a, a bigger deficit, um, minus uh, or a plus six. Uh, I think that if Seattle does win, they win. I think the, the line should be. Uh, Seattle two, minus two and a half. That's what I had in my head coming in. Um, no more than three. They they missed it. Um, I, I don't know if there's some injuries or there's something I don't know about. Vegas is very good at what they do. So that being said, um, you know, don't discount it. Don't just discount it. But I, I think they missed it. I think they missed this one. Um, do I think the Broncos win? It's hard to say. Um, again, you don't know what you have in Bo Nix or you don't have in Bo Nix. So I'm going to say the Broncos do win, do, um, get the spread. I just think Seattle probably wins it by one or two points. Um, so I'm going to say the Broncos plus six, but the Seahawks probably win that game. Tough, tough to say because you never know. 
you know, could be that it comes down to a 50-yard field goal at the end of the game. And if the Broncos make it, they win. If they miss it, they lose. Who knows how that game's going to come down to at the end. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Broncos at uh, plus six. Normally, I write these all down. So now I'm going to have to go back and actually listen to myself and what I pick. Um, so we'll, we'll find out together. It'll be exciting. Um, and I'm going to look at the uh, Chiefs game right after this and see what the score is. I, I Again... No, no idea um, if the Chiefs won or lost to Baltimore or, you know, what happened there. Um, but I'm going to stand with my pick. I, I think the, the Chiefs probably win that game. They probably did win it. I, I just don't know for sure. Um, of course, now, if, if the Ravens won, you know I'm not lying. <laughs> um, anyway. We'll, we'll get this out uh, before too much longer. That way um, that the pick for tonight's game between Green Bay and the Eagles will make more sense um, and be a little bit more on the honesty side of getting it out before the games actually occur. Anyway, uh, moving on. Let's go um, Buccaneers versus Commanders. Oh, yeah, Redskins. <laughs> Tough for me to remember um, who the commanders are because uh, all I can see is the big W, and I'm like, what does that, what was that, where are they, what's the history? Um, so I have to think about it. Um, anyway, uh, Buccaneers. Uh, our favorite minus three over the commanders. Man, I think this is a closer game than even that. Um, I think this is going to be another close and probably kind of a yawner. I don't think either one of these teams makes playoffs. I'm going to go commanders plus three. We're going to go for that. Um, and you know, I know this video is almost an hour long already. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and just kind of speed things up and kind of, uh, just pick the last three, maybe not give so much commentary on these. So I apologize for any of the fans that are coming up. Um, again, if you want a video to be longer and give more information of what I think, Feel free to leave it in the comments and let me know. So, um, moving forward, uh, Browns v. Cowboys. Browns are favored by two and a half. Um, again, it's tough to know what's going on in Dallas. Um, Gary Jones, being the owner of the Cowboys, he really wants to run the team and... You know, he can't run them very well. It hasn't been since Jimmy Johnson that they've had any type of success down there. Um, and Jimmy Johnson ran the team. And it, it wasn't until um, Barry Switzer came in the following year and won a Super Bowl with uh, Jimmy Johnson's team, really. Um, nothing against Barry Switzer. He's... A great coach. He was at OU. Uh, I I I don't particularly like the guy because uh, I don't really like OU all that much because I'm uh, Oklahoma State guy, so I'm a Cowboys fan, um, and it always seemed like everything was about OU and nothing was ever given to Oklahoma State. And kind of the recruiting kind of goes the same way. And every year you see um, them play, it's kind of a uh, you know bigger, faster, more dominant team on Oklahoma. Uh, but the last time they met, um, Oklahoma State walked out with a victory. And they probably won't play again for a while. So, oh, you can think about that loss uh, and take that L with them along the way. 
Um, and so can um, Barry Switzer, and so can uh, uh, Jerry Jones, because um, he's not going to do well this this until he relinquishes that control. Um, he's really got to he's got to let people who know what they're doing a little bit better run the team. I know he's got the final say. He's the owner. He should, but realistically. How well has he done as the owner since Jimmy Johnson? I mean, come on, Dallas. Come on, Cowboys fans. Where are you at? What do you think about that? You know what? Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and take the Browns plus or uh, minus two and a half. Browns minus two and a half. Done. Let's move on. Lions, Rams. Uh, Rams favored by... Um, Three, three and a half. Why are they favored over the Lions? I mean, the Rams are good. Don't get me wrong. But I think the Lions are the better team. Uh, that's kind of another no-brainer. I'm going to take the Lions plus three and a half on that one. Um I mean, may, maybe the Rams win, but I think the Lions win that game outright. So I'm not sure why they set the line at, at Rams minus three and a half. It's just kind of strange to me. Um, yeah, I think they, they kind of missed on that one too. Uh, but it is week one. Harder to judge and gauge to all of that. Who knows? Uh, Niners versus the Jets. Now with Aaron Rodgers being back, and if they have a better, uh, more protectable line, which I believe they do, Rodgers is probably a little better than his normal average self, um, having that last year off to recover. Um, do they have some sort of running game that can, you know, bail him out and give him some rest on some of those reps? Yes. Um, their defense is improved. Um, so do I think they're going to win some more games? Yeah. Probably get into that six or seven range there. I don't think the Jets make the playoffs. The Niners do. Um, again, it's week one. It's hard to say. Um, maybe the Jets turn around and they're more like a Green Bay this year. Uh, and and kind of a little heavier, loftier hitters than I'm giving them credit for. Which, that's happened in the past. Um, I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. I've probably been wrong today on some of what I've said. Um, the, all of that being said, I think the Niners are the better team. I think they do have it pretty accurate at minus four for them. It, it's hard to know what you have in the Jets, but I'm going to give the Jets the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to take the Jets plus four. I think the Niners win, but again... I think you're going to see a lot of closer games this week um, as teams are still really feeling each other out and trying to get their identities together and figuring out what they're going to do, both on offense and defense. So I don't think you really see everything that you're going to see out of the teams week one. They, they're kind of, you know, blind men feeling around in a strange room. Um, don't know exactly where all the furniture is, but they're figuring it out. And they will figure it out. So, uh, just uh, just week one starting out, I think the Niners are better. But again, I think that the Jets probably are better than than uh, minus four dogs in that. Um, so I, I'm going to take the Jets as underdogs and and take them with the plus four on that, and that'll. Wrap up week one right at the one hour mark. So if you stayed this far through the video, congratulations. You've made it. You made it through week one. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Everybody, thanks for watching, tuning in to Glowing Card Gaming. We'll go ahead and make these picks every week, and I will show you how I've done with the wins and losses personally throughout the season. We'll try and do better than last season. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. Good night, everybody. And as always, be good to each other.